All right, welcome back. Now, let's uh, continue the discussion now. And being joined on the program from Abuja by Patrick Agbambu, who is a security uh, consultant. Patrick, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Um, the, the last time uh, we had you on this program, we were actually talking about the Kankara boys. Less than three months uh, down the line, we have another situation. What, what do you make of this? Uh it, it was it's not a surprising uh, act for me because um, I I had raised uh, uh, the alarm that uh, once a ransom or negotiations uh, for payment of whatever reason is entered with criminal gangs, definitely it will continue uh, because it will be it's now a business for them. So. Uh, but so you think this was that, motivated uh, by a ransom payment that probably because. Ransom was paid in in the case of the Kankara boys, and that's the reason why these guys decided to do this. C certainly, certainly. But it would appear, uh, f from what we're hearing from she Sheikh Gumi, for instance, uh, who has been touring some of these forests and meeting with the uh, meeting with these bandits. Now it, it appears the the, the the story is different. As if. Um, uh, the impression the bandits are giving is that uh, ransom is actually not the problem. <laughs> and uh, the Sheikh, same Sheikh Gumi did say that um, uh, government uh, should pay uh, ransom or carry out amnesty for these guys. Mm -hmm. That if it was done for the Niger Delta mm -hmm. militant, it should also be done for these people. So really, um, the truth of matter and we must... Um, uh, called a spade, a spade for what it is. Uh, mm. uh, it's all motivated by money, and uh, I think that government should um, take drastic action immediately, or else it will continue. Well, it do it doesn't appear um, uh, we're, we're going to see uh, that that kind of drastic action because in the case of Kankara, for instance, um, well, the Inspector General of Police has now confirmed that some arrests were made and that they would be prosecuted, but um, we, we haven't seen much from that, and. Um, uh, obviously, the, the government seems to be talking about uh, not just a kinetic approach, but even the non-kinetic kinetic approach. And from what we are seeing with the Kagara uh, kidnapping now, um, it would appear the preponderance of opinion is on negotiation. Yeah, um, Deji, the truth of the matter is that negotiations can come. It doesn't necessarily have to be with payment of money. Hmm. Um, first and foremost, uh, these guys are bandits. These guys are criminals. Um, and so uh, for whatever reason or cause the thing they are standing for, which I don't think there is any in this, uh, in this situation, um, it does need to be able to have them uh, sit down and discuss with them um, it's funny, but uh, since uh, we have uh, somebody in, in the rank of um, Shegumi himself interacting with these bandits, uh, meeting with them, uh, what seems to be impossible for the law enforcement agencies, uh, somebody is interacting with them, uh, that is giving a lead that, uh, that something can be done. So government should be able uh, to, uh, to discuss with them, and um, in discussing with them, uh, employ some tactical means without paying money you you can have some negotiation one of the reasons why uh, some of the suspects uh, arrested during the kankara uh, uh, adoption were not prosecuted maybe reasons being uh, and issues that local let's use them as a, a form of a, a negotiation as a form of extracting information from them uh, so hmm. negotiation doesn't necessarily mean uh, paying money because of course when you pay money then other groups will see it as a motivation to carry out similar acts now uh, there's a sound bite i want you to listen to because um, the, the question has always been asked that how best do we deal with with this insecurity challenge especially the issue of kidnapping and sometimes people uh, don't really understand uh, the, the kind of complex problem our security agencies uh, are, are having to deal with, especially with the issue of ungoverned spaces. Take, for instance, the case of Niger State. I imagine how wide that state is. We're talking about a state of over 76,000 square kilometers. It, it's a very big area, and it's, it will be very difficult to police. I just want you to take a lesson uh, to what uh, the immediate, um, the, the former 
yeah, the, the, the immediate past uh, chief of army staff. Now, what he said when he appeared before uh, the Senate uh, committee screening him now for his ambassadorial appointment. Let's take a lesson to what he said. Uh, and uh, when we come back, I, I want to get your take on that. There are so many ungovernable spaces. Until those things are penetrated, those locations are penetrated with road infrastructure, with rail, with amenities in terms of uh, hospitals, schools, and so on. Then we carry everybody along. And education is very fundamental. You know, and unless these things are done, you know, we will make, despite the diplomatic efforts, internally we must get it right. Because this thing cannot end, I, I predicted sometimes that it may take another 20 years, and that is the truth. Uh, what, what do you make of that? I, I, I agree with him totally. I agree with him totally. The truth is that, like you said earlier, uh, there are so many ungoverned spaces uh, in Nigeria, and that is giving openings for uh, these criminal gangs to have a and they carry out their nefarious activities. So uh, the quicker we'll, we'll take charge of these areas. Yes, we we'll, we'll have such short, short, shortage of manpowers in all our security departments, and so uh, we may not have them uh, to cover every place. Then secondly, uh, development is actually lacking in most of all these places. There are so many communities where there are no motorable roads, there are no roads. Uh, they don't understand that there's government in place. But when you go to some of these communities, they will tell you that they only hear about government and government officials when um, during campaigns for election once election comes and their the people are uh, occupy position then they don't see them again until when another election comes so that has to change because when you do that you are you, you are making it easier for these criminals uh, be it terrorists be it insurgents be it bandits uh, to buy and win the hearts and minds of uh, minds of all these uh, these nigerians so the earlier the government realized this and as much as possible uh, extend uh, development to those areas. Uh, two days back, I was telling some people, I said, listen, uh, the governors of the states in Nigeria are not being fair to the people. Um, they have very large amount as uh, security votes. And uh, to them, these security votes is just to take care of their own personal securities and their families. It's supposed to be for security of the state also. Uh, how many of them have, have, have deployed this money to taking care of providing these amenities? When the former the chief of army said, what he's talking about is very, very correct because when you travel to some of all these our communities, mm. you see lack of government presence there and it's, it's, a, it, it's a big danger for us. Some people have suggested that... Uh, one other way to deal with this problem is to begin to use technology. But, but we know technology, too, has its own limitation. But, but how much difference do you think technology will make in, in, in dealing with this problem? Yeah, technology will help a lot. Technology will help a lot. Uh, sincerely speaking, um, I think uh, I've had some uh, governors talk about mooted issues of uh, use of drones and all that for... For surveillance and all that, which is which is true, which is real. And, uh, and be, be, because just sorry to cut you short, but just because he talked about um, uh, the use of drone and, and governors talking about that, let's take a lesson now to uh, the governor of Niger State, uh, where he said, well, he had actually planned to deploy drone. He actually bought the drone, but you know, government bureaucracy would not allow them use the drone. That as a matter of fact, the drone is there. He is yet to take delivery of the drone all because of bureaucracy. Let's take a listen to him. Niger is 76,000 square kilometers. We try to provide or to support some of the responsibilities of federal authorities by investing in equipment. How many state governments have to invest in equipment, in trackers, drones? But even when you buy these equipment, it's a problem to bring them in because you need the approval from the federal authorities. At the moment, even as a state government, we imported, we bought, we paid for 100% for the drone. Over three months ago, it's been ready. We cannot pick it up because of end-user certificate. That drone will help 
security agents on ground because they cannot patrol the forest with vehicles. They can't. No access. Now, th this could be pretty frustrating, Patrick. Uh, uh, um, not being able to access to, to use the drone just because of uh, uh, the lack of end user certificate. Uh, w w let me have your take on, on this. De Deji, I, I, I think that uh, with due respect to the governor, the governor is one of those governors that are close to quote and unquote the federal government, he's close to the president. He's a, he's a member of the APC, the ruling party in the in the federal level, at the federal level. So him expressing this um, it look, uh, gives room for some uh, some worry uh, uh, because I, fe I feel that um, if he felt that if he realized that he had this and he needed this, not to stop him from approaching the commander in chief himself, the president said, listen, sir, I, your excellency, I have this and I'm not getting what I need for us to deploy it. I think uh, he's just only trying to shift blames for now. Uh, that is my own conclusion because Niger State, uh, remind, uh, remember, it's, it's, it's been attacked severely, severally. I, I, my last count from the three months that he mentioned till now, some communities have been attacked in Niger State for over 20 times since in the last three months. So um, the governor, if before this happened, I expected he should have uh, taken this up with the president himself. If the if the end user certificate from the National Security Advisor's Office has been a problem, then the president, I don't think, would would uh, would not have responded to yeah, him. because uh, because but, it, it's actually a surprise that um, you know the yes, the, the federal exactly government so, will be standing yeah, in in the way of fighting that. security in Niger State. Because you look at the state, very vast, seventy six over seventy six thousand square kilometer even if you put the entire armed forces of this country the entire police of this country put them in that state uh, there, there still won't be enough no i i agree with you niger state is the uh, second largest uh, landmass in fact is the largest in nigeria um so vast and uh, the, that just like the governor said it, it, no human uh, no human uh, presence can cover the landmarks of Niger State. And so uh, there are a lot of governed space over there. But again, there are also lack of uh, infrastructure. There are no roads in Niger State. Niger State is one of those states that uh, are deprived of some of all this development, maybe because it's very fast. Uh, many communities do not have roads. So, but uh, like I was saying earlier, I, f I feel that uh, this really calls for question the, uh, the Office of National Security Advisor, because if a governor is talking this, a governor of APC is talking this, I wonder what problems other governors uh, who are not from APC or other people will be going through. And I think the, the Office of National Security Advisor must sit up, must sit up, if we must solve this problem now, it's not about having town hall meetings. It's not about having seminars and summits and conferences. It's about being pr uh, practical in uh, in what we're doing, being pragmatic. Patrick Agwambu, thank you very much for your time and thank you for joining us on the program. It's a pleasure. Thank you. All right. We'll take a short break. I'll be right back. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places, um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On Digi360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues.